So, assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh, and thank you so much for coming on today. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Rehan, I'm really delighted to be with you and to um, just chat to you. Well, oh, the pleasure is mine. So, for anyone who doesn't know, uh, you designed or you produced or translated this absolutely excellent copy of the Quran. It's just such a beautiful, beautiful book. The pages, the um, some of the stuff that I like about this is you have the Arabic in one side, you have the English in the other. Like all the ayahs are numbered here uh, in the Quranic side, and then it's numbered here on the English side. So knowing, oh, I'm reading this line here it is in English. Furthermore, like you have the you have the translation, but at the beginning of every surah, there's like a little part of context of when the surah was revealed. And I think just for like how digestible it is, how uh, plain and simple the English is, it's a beautiful copy. And for anyone who doesn't currently have it, I really recommend you get this copy of the, the beautiful Quran, mashallah. Well, thank you, uh, Rehad, for uh, those beautiful words. Uh, you know, the, the Quran itself is called Quranum Majid. Uh, and the word uh, Majid, uh, you know, it means majestic. Um, and anybody who reads it, lives by it, also becomes majestic and splendid. You know, and, and the idea of Majid, it, it's an, you see, English and Arabic are not congruent languages. You're an English teacher, so you yeah. will understand. They are actually very different. And, of course. And, 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 and therefore, it's not always easy to find the, the equivalent words. You won't, you won't find that. You don't it's, exist. It's so, so difficult. Uh, and, and so you really then have to mm. delve into what the commentators said about the word Majid, you know. Uh, and, and, you know, they bring out these ideas that the splendor, uh, there is the idea uh, of it being very noble, uh, and 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 that that's what it is really. It, it's it's a noble book because it comes from uh, the one who is the the greatest, who is the Almighty, the the one who is the wisest. Okay, therefore it's bound to be full of wisdom uh, and and beauty, uh, and and uh, it's there really to help us live a flourishing life. I, I like using this clause, uh, this you know, uh, sort of adjective, you could call it, a flourishing life. Mm -hmm. and, and that's what the Quran is about, helping us to live a life in which we flourish. Oh, absolutely. I'm sure we're going to go into all of that. Um, another thing you touched on, which I'd like to kind of go into depth on, is uh, the challenges that are kind of associated with translating a Quran. Nonetheless, in such a kind of plain and simple, uh, easy to digest way, which I think you've done a great job on. Uh, but before we go into all that, I'd like to know a bit about the man himself. And uh, I know you have your doctoral background. So uh, where were you from and uh, what was your life like before deciding to uh, make this majestic Quran? OK, well, I, I grew up in Halifax, up in uh, Yorkshire, West Yorkshire. Um, and then went to university in, in Birmingham, where I studied biochemistry and did my PhD as well. And then I got a job here in Nottingham, uh, in Nottingham Trent University as a researcher back in 1985. Okay, And since then, uh, I settled here. But in my childhood, I was very fortunate, mashallah, that I had a very lively masjid and very lively teachers. And so I did my hifs uh, and then also uh, learned tajweed. Tajweed is the art of reciting the Quran melodiously, beautifully, and accurately. Okay, mm. uh, so I, I am I'm really I, I love Tajweed. I teach it. I've written two books on Tajweed as well. So I'm really um, and, and and I love the reciters like Sheikh Abdul Basit and, and nowadays Imam Sodes and Kurdi. You know, and and um, so from my childhood, I was really I had fallen in love with the Quran at around the age of. I would say it was about 10 or 11 years old when I, oh, when, a, when a Qari came from Medina Sharif back in 19, it would have been about 1970. Mm -hmm. And this amazing Imam and Qari and a teacher from Masjid al uh, came to UK. He was on a tour and he came to my mosque in Halifax. So, uh, and, and uh, you know, we had a methyl and I, I recorded his uh, beautiful Talavat on, you know, we used to have these Philips, Cassette recorders, small Philips 
cassette recorders. You know what? The, I don't know. You, you yeah, yeah, I know, I know. Remember what cassettes yeah, yeah, are? I know. <laughs> yes. Some well, of the audience won't, but I know. <laughs> so I recorded his tilawat on that, and uh -huh. you know, he he was reading from Surah Al Maida. It was so beautiful. Sort of from Surah At-Tawbah. Ya ayyuhalladheena amanu taqullaha wa kunu ma'a sadiqeen. Of course, I can't read as beautiful as a Sheikh. His name was Khalil Rahman, mashallah. And so I got very impressed with that. And so I recorded it. And I used to listen that day in and day out. And then I came across Sheikh Abdul Basit got some of his cassettes and I fell in love and then I started memorizing the Quran. So mashallah, I have a very deep and a long history of my love with the Quran and the Quran blessed me, you know, because then when I was about 17, Qari uh, Ghulam Rasul, one of the great reciters of Pakistan came to Halifax and I persuaded him to stay <laughs> and he stayed with us in, in our uh, you know, in, in our organization and taught me as well. So I yeah. learned from one of the master Qaris. Qari Ram Sud is such a famous, he used to recite on the Pakistan radio, national mm -hmm. radio. In Pakistan, assembly used to open with his Talawat. Wow. And then he also had this amazing privilege of re recording the whole Quran in, uh, uh, you know, back, this was in 1977. Mm -hmm. So he was the first one who recorded and then it was translated into Urdu. Uh, so I had this amazing, uh, you know, uh, sort of chance of learning Quran. Uh, but then I studied by medical sciences, uh, by chemistry, physiology, and pharmacology, uh, and then did a PhD in it. I, so I, I have a scientific sort of mindset, alhamdulillah, very um, logical, I hope, and rational. Uh, so, yes. MashaAllah, that's amazing. So uh, when did the idea of... Um... Uh, creating or your own kind of translation and producing your own copy of the Quran? Well, uh, you know, um, so I, I, I trained as a scientist, worked as a scientist for nearly mm -hmm. 12 years, and then I went off to, I, I just thought I'd done enough of my dunya uh, and uh, I had enough of my worldly, what I needed, you know, I, I just thought I had enough, alhamdulillah. So I went off to study in uh, Pakistan with Peer Muhammad Karim Shah Rahmatullahi Ta'ala, who was the uh, Justice of Pakistan uh, Supreme Court, as well as one of the greatest scholars. And he was also the Mufassir and translator of the Quran in Urdu. His tafsir is in five volumes, very beautiful tafsir, very most popular actually now in Urdu, one of the most popular tafsir. Wow. So I had this other privilege of going to sit at the feet of this great Mufassir. Uh, so he taught me, mashallah. So I, I studied in his Darulun for one year. And then he said to me, uh, you know, you really do need to um, continue. So he got me a place in Al-Azhar, where he was a graduate from in Cairo in Egypt. So I went to Al-Azhar and studied there as well, alhamdulillah, and graduated from the University of Al-Azhar. Uh, and when I came back to UK, mm -hmm. I started teaching um, uh, Quran and in, in, uh, also in an Islamic school. Um, and uh, was head teacher effectively. And then I, uh, when I used to do my Darsi Quran to my students, they always, you know, were really uh, put off by the archaic language of the translations. Most translations, you know, were done, well, we, our wonderful translation by Pickthall, Marmaduke Pickthall was done in 1930. Mm. He did it, uh, he was an uh, English aristocrat uh, and a novelist as well, uh, and an amazing writer. Um, and uh, but he was, of course, these were the days of the uh, high days of Shakespearean English. People loved mm -hmm. you know, Shakespearean English in those days, and and uh, Oxford and Cambridge were the great centres of it. Sure. Uh, so he did the translation in that Shakespearean English. So it's archaic. It was, it was, a, it's a good, accurate translation, mashallah. That's why it stood the test of the time for nearly a hundred years now, yeah, mashallah. mashallah. However, it's, it's not, it's sure. difficult. Uh, it's also very literal. And I know you, you're an English teacher, you will know problems you have when you do translate literally. <clears throat> you lose a lot of meanings and, and, and you lose the nuances. You lose sometimes even the message, <laughs> you know, if you translate uh, uh, literally. Uh, and particularly with two languages as uh, 
it's definitely incongruent as, as yeah, Arabic yeah, and English. Absolutely. It's even a more big problem. Uh, however, he did a very good job, mashallah, because he had a an Az Azhari professor with him who worked along with him, making sure you know he, he got everything right. And then there was another amazing translation done by Abdullah Yusuf Ali, uh, rahimahullah, may Allah bless his soul. Uh, he was another graduate from Cambridge uh, in English. I, I mean, his English was amazing as well. Again, he's another Shakespearean scholar. So he did it again in that old style. And then we've had many other translations, um, but people uh, remain, uh, seem to be translating it for elites sometime, I feel. You know, it wasn't really done for masses. Uh, perhaps in those days, you only had a few readers anyway, those who came from top universities, uh, you know, Russell Group universities in those days. Uh, so that's perhaps why they weren't too concerned about making it accessible. That's the real thing, uh, Rehan. You know, my aim was, how do I make the Quran accessible, plain, simple to understand the message? Sure. So it was more to do with the, um, I suppose, the the complexity that already existed with the um, the current translations which were out, this is what motivated you to think we need something clearer for uh, for not just for non-Muslims, but even for the Muslims as well. And also modern as well, uh, Rehan. By modern, I mean you know nowadays if you pick up an ex if you pick up a textbook nowadays, what mm -hmm. happens? Well, every page has had uh, has two or three headings. Isn't that sure. true? Mm -hmm. If it doesn't. You know, it becomes a chunk of writing that students are put off from, uh, and and so this was the other thing. As a teacher, I was a head teacher, and I was also a teacher a trainer uh, for Gloucestershire University. So I knew something about pedagogy and mm -hmm. and the art of learning and teaching. So I, I thought, you know, we really need to make the, you know the uh, the Quran bite size. And of course, the Quran is already bite-sized, and we don't have to make it. It is already bite-sized. If you look at how the Quran's stories are, well, five lines, six lines, you know, they are sh quite short stories. It doesn't go into too much details. The Quran is very pithy, uh, very yeah. concise. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, it really is. It is it's really for modern reader <laughs> mm -hmm. because you know we don't have too much time. You know, it really it it always hits. Uh, you know, the nail on the head. Always. It's accurate. It just gets to the bits that you need to get to. You can't really uh, remove anything. There's nothing superfluous. There isn't anything that is um, extra. Sure. Seriously, there is nothing, you know, it's so accurate, so beautiful, uh, and, and so concise. Uh, so I, 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 so what I did was, yeah, we're going to have headings. I want to help my reader. You see, I think this is a very important, when you are, you see, my, my predecessors, the translators, were actually dealing with elites. Mm -hmm. Let's be honest, you know, uh, in, in time of Pictol, there might have been no more than 1% of uh, people being able to read. The literacy rate, certainly in Indo Park, was no more than 1%. Mm -hmm. I, I would doubt that, okay? Mm -hmm. That is the sort of level, you, so these would be elites, okay? Mm -hmm. So it was for the elites. Well, we're talking about everybody. I don't, first of all, I don't believe in elitism as such. Okay, well, there isn't, that's a, 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 a sort of a Western concept of superiority mm -hmm. of intel, intelli, intelligent, intelligentsia, but I, I don't actually buy into that. We, we're all equal, alhamdulillah. We're all responsible as equally and as important as each other, inshallah, all of us are. So, and, and that is again a very amazing. Uh, message the Quran keeps on giving always always you are all equal you're all the same all right yeah Don't, sure. you're superior or you're better than others you know this idea and and this is where you know mm -hmm. today again you know when we've got so much racism uh, Rehan, out there so much prejudice so much biases so much Islamophobia out there it's a result of this uh, this nonsensical idea that somehow I am better than the other. And, and, and the Quran keeps on reminding us of our common humanity <clears throat> always. So, yeah, coming back to how do we, how, what I wanted to do, I want to just make it bite-sized, easy. 
and and in my headings, you know, I, I, you you know, teacher, I hope you've sort of analyzed. I, I try to be journalistic, <laughs> you mm -hmm. know, make them short, um, attention grabbing as well. But I hope they're accurate. I, I try to convey what's in in, in the passage. Sure. And, and that's where I'll be very happy to. I'm, I'm listening to my readers when they send ideas, you know, and 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 uh, and we've ha we we had a lot of uh -huh. work done on the headings. I actually had about forty scholars actually in two workshops we did in two days where we actually just i asked uh, these 40 scholars we were sitting together actually on two days looking at how accurate does it are, are the headings mm. uh, do they really um, represent the contents of that passage and alhamdulillah except few places they, they were very happy with it you know i've noticed because um I've got, this is my copy, this one was gifted to me uh, over a year ago, maybe closer to two years ago, this one was gifted to me, but since then I've been uh, buying them as they are up there to gift out, and I've noticed these newer versions, they actually have like edits and changes, so I'm slightly envious of the people who are getting these new versions, I'm, I'm curious what's in them, but I, I can see it's really beautifully said, it's very concise, and bite size as you said, as you say. Another area that I really appreciate that made this Quran stand out to me is that uh, prior to the introduction of the surah, you have some context of where the where it happened, why it happened, and I think that's really good for well for anyone who doesn't have has not maybe had an Islamic teacher, you know, who's not had a Quran teacher because the Quran is not like in a chronological order, like it's not like you need to read Fatiha then Bakra and uh imran it's because it's it's um <clears throat> it's it, it's got its own uniqueness to it and i think the introductions to the surahs in this really helped it alhamdulillah i think the uh, you, you see um Rehan, the quran was revealed uh, for a to address a particular occurrence mm -hmm. something that happened an event or incident that happened in, uh, around the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and uh, or the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam asked Allah something, uh, you know, and 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 uh, this asking would have been sometimes verbal, sometimes, you know, Allah reads the hearts and minds. <laughs> What's in your heart? What is in your mind, oh, messenger? We know what it is. So the revelation used to come and that's what revelation means. You know, this is the wahj that comes directly from Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala in response to um, as I say, a query, uh, a need. It's not, you know, this is the beauty of it. It came down to address a need. Uh, and, uh, you know, I, 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 let, let me just share with you this beautiful story of Surah Al Mujadala. Mm -hmm. This is how the uh, 28th spara begins. Qad Allahu tujadiluka. This is about the woman. This, this woman comes to the Prophet. Sallallahu and Aisha, the wife of the Prophet, is telling this report. She says, you know, this woman comes uh, and uh, she's arguing with the Prophet, saying, look, my husband has done zihar to me. Now, zihar was this evil and wretched method of giving divorce to the women in, 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 in olden days, and uh, well, in the pre-Islamic days. And what it meant was she wasn't free. She wasn't married. It was a very terrible a way of keeping her enslaved almost okay and he's done this to me uh and and uh, do something about it and the prophet said well this is the custom of these people and i you know i can only speak and i can only say and i can only tell you things when my lord tells me to so so the prophet remains silent and there is this you can just imagine how this woman would have been um, anxious. Well, no, no, she would actually actually been distraught. She was angry. She was, you know, she was really um, in, 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 torn apart. You can just imagine, you know, what state she was in. And she was really shouting, and Aisha radiallahu anha was listening to this. The prophet is there, you know, commiserating with her in a way, but saying, well, look, I, I, I'm not gonna say anything. I can't say anything. So what happens? The Quran is revealed. Allah reveals it and says, God sami Allahu. Allah has heard this woman and Allah gives her the good news that this is a harm, this husband has done is null and it is a vicious thing and you've got to condemn it. <laughs> you know, this is, so here you, you, you wonder, 
where is the Lord? It, where is, is, is billions, trillions of miles away and he's listening to this woman's plea. So this is what the Quran is about. You know, the Quran is real. It's about real problems. The problems, uh, you know, of the, 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 the um, sad wife, uh, of, of the lamenting uh, mother, uh, of, of the heartbroken father. You know, this is what the Quran is. It's a response to that. But you see, the Quran doesn't tell that. It doesn't tell the background itself. It's too majestic for that. And that is what it left for the scholars and for the prophet to tell and the sahaba and for us to write down. And, and this is why we have the, the Farsil, the commentaries and the background to it. So what I did was the, in, in the introduction to each surah, I, I, I looked at what is the central theme and also what, when was it revealed, first of all? Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, th- th- that's really important to help the um, reader understand the time of the pe- Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And it, it's also reflected actually in the content of the surah, because in Makkah, there was tension and you see a lot of tension, you see a lot of um, short, uh, you know, very short sentences. Sometimes there's two or three words, well, that's all it is because there is, is to express that passion uh, and, and, and also to bring out that tension that was there. Uh, and and uh, uh, so we have to actually fill in lots of gaps, uh, Rehan. There's lots of gaps. And these gaps, th- that does not mean, you know, there are gaps <laughs> in the Quran. The Quran is complete, mm-hmm. but gaps in our understanding. And we fill those in through two, two ways we do it. One, we do it through the Quran itself, because the Quran is brief in one place, but it expands and unpacks that brevity and that very concise um, message in another place. It expands it, you know, over a full page. So you can use the Quran sometimes to expand. And sometimes we will go to the Hadith. We use the Prophet Sallallahu sayings about this. So this is where the commentary comes in. So see with um, producing a Quran like this, and I can tell you are really well researched, mashallah. I can tell, like the way you speak about the Quran and the stories, like you have passion behind you when you do it. Um, so uh, one question that I guess I have is, see when you're producing a uh, Quran, like obviously there's going to be certain linguistic challenges. So how do you handle or I suppose mitigate that, that um I don't know if the correct word is nervousness or like any anxiety or any kind of worry about getting this right. Was that something that was stressful for you or was it just raw passion? And how did you kind of overcome those challenges? You know, uh, Muslims have done so much work on the Quran. Mm. And uh, so this was really, uh, no, that, that wasn't a challenge. I'll tell you what the challenge was. You know, uh, for 1400 years, Muslims have been learning, understanding, evaluating, going deep into the language of the Quran, so deep that almost every, not just the word, but every letter of the Quran has been examined very thoroughly. And we have volumes and volumes of the Farsil, the commentaries on the Quran. Uh, And so Alhamdulillah, you know, this amazing work uh, from the punctuation marks to the Arab, that is the, uh, you know, the um, uh, semantic arrangement of the words, uh, the morphology of each word, uh, and, and, and the, all the rhetorical devices used in the Quran, from metonymy to metaphors to euph- euphemism, to repetition, to alliteration, to assonance, uh, you know, you name all those, you know, 40 or 50 devices of rhetoric. Mm-hmm. Alhamdulillah, they have all been very, very thoroughly examined, uh, uh, Rehan. So I, I didn't have any problem. They're all in our amazing books. Uh, so it, what it meant was <clears throat> knowing that and, and reading it, and mm-hmm. so, which I have said to you, I have this almost now, mashallah, 50 years of reading and teaching the Quran. So it, it's not... What was challenging is actually, as I said to you, the English language mm-hmm. and this incongruent, incongruous nature of Arabic and English. Um, they don't actually go uh, hand in hand. Of it's course, quite different. Very different. Uh, yeah. uh, you know, and and it's, it's, it's finding the right words, which is challenging. Uh, and also the idioms, of course, were a ch- challenge. So I, 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 I went 
for what the Mufassirin said, that this is an Arabic idiom. So you would never translate an idiom. You know that. If you yes. did, you, you get a messy, yes. totally mess. And then some yeah. translators have done that. And they, this is why it's so messy sometimes. Yeah, like know. it's it's raining cats and dogs. You, you can't say <laughs> yeah, try to translate that into, <laughs> translate that into Arabic. <laughs> okay. And you see the absurdity of it. Yeah, yeah exactly. And, and, and so, alhamdulillah, I, I, I think, you know, uh, uh, Let's be honest, uh, you know, great giants have done amazing work on the Quran. Mm. And I, I I was so fortunate that, uh, you know, I, I had the privilege of knowing who they are, learning from them, Allah. reading their books and copying from them. Let's be honest, mm. you know, at the end of the day, you know, the I'm now doing a tafsir. Madarik is one of the, it's a 700 years old tafsir, very popular tafsir. It's called tafsir al nasfi as well by Imam Nasafi. But tafsir al madarik is, uh, is, is, is uh, the tafsir. And it's one of my favorite ones because it's simple and easy. And I'm actually using that to do footnotes for the, the, our own uh, next edition, inshallah, that we will do. Uh, and I'm going to be enriching that with these um, great... Um, you know, scholars of, uh, of of Islam, you know, their thinking and understanding was amazing. But, you know, there's something missing from those tafasir. And what's missing is modern science mm. and modern knowledge. And, you know, we live in a, oh my goodness, we live in a really an age which is amazing. You know, there is a lot of enlightenment there. Of course, there is darkness as well. <laughs> but there is, let's be honest, you know, the, uh, the sciences of psychology, the sciences of history, um, and the uh, anthropology, um, and, and English language. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, the way they've developed English language and its rhetoric and its semantics and of stylistics course. over the last years is just you know, it's mind boggling. It is so beautiful. <laughs> so, you know, I, I think, uh, Rehan, we need to use um, these modern sciences to understand the Quran. And of course, when I, people by science, they always understand, uh, you know, biology, physics, chemistry, which is my realm as well. So I'm very fortunate, uh, Rehan, that I can use that knowledge. And it does give you some amazing understandings of the Quran when you use that. For example, I'll, I'll, let me share this with you. This is really mm -hmm. Surah Al-Hadid. Al-Hadid is the iron, you know, the iron ore from which we get the steel, mm -hmm. this iron. Uh, this is a whole Surah after Surah Al-Waqiyah, Surah Al-Hadid, Surah Rahman, Surah Al-Waqiyah, and Surah Al-Hadid, the iron. In that Surah is a verse which has been really uh, challenging the previous translators and commentators, hugely. And, and the verse is this, Allah says, وَأَنزَلْنَا الْحَدِيدَ فِيهِ بَعْصٌ شَدِيدٌ وَمَنَافِعُ لِلنَّاسِ Allah says, we sent down the iron, and it is a very hard, and it is very beneficial for human beings. Now, uh, concentrate on the word Rehan on, we sent down the iron. So how do you think they translated it in the past? Oh, I don't know. I could only guess. Well, they could. Yeah, well, uh -huh. they translated it as my own teacher, Pir Krimshah, amazing scholar. He translated, which means we made the iron. Because, uh, and so okay. did all the commentators, because they couldn't understand. What does it mean, you know, the... The, 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 the feather comes down, you know, if you throw the apple, Newton's apple, it comes down mm -hmm. because there's gravity. But how does the iron come down? Mm -hmm. Allah says, we sent down the iron. What, what, what is this? How, could, how, how did Allah send iron down? Are you with it? Yeah, yeah. So the previous commentators, all of them would say, uh, this here is metaphorical. It means we created Subhanallah. What do, what do we know about iron now? I have we no know idea, that Tom. It's, it's, it's stardust, you know, about ah, 80 years ago. Wow, Subhanallah. <laughs> wow. You see, this is Mashallah. it. You see, the reality is this. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows the reality. But of course, previous people wouldn't understand. So Allah should have really said, you know, uh, if we are to tell Allah what to do, you know, if we dare to do that, we would say, you know, you should have really said, I created, I made iron. But no, 
Subhanallah. It, because you want to, these are the secrets. You know, these are the unknowns in the Quran, which today we are witnesses to. Yeah, That's absolutely. So, completely. <laughs> so, you know, when, you, uh -huh. when we see this, you say, Subhanallah. You know, Subhanallah. this is... Majest this is majestic. This is miraculous. How could Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam know that the iron came down from the stars? Oh, in, in fact, you know, I, I, as a scientist, I know, and we, we should all know now mm -hmm. that all the elements on Earth mm -hmm. actually are stardust. They they they're actually manufactured and made inside the stars. So your magnesium, your sodium, your potassium, your calcium. Really, I don't know that. Iron, they all come down. And they came down actually during those, the, the age of the earth when it was being molded, when it was being made. You know, you had the meteorites coming from all these mm -hmm. stars, bringing all these amazing elements. So that is why they are scattered and they are in the earth. So uh, this is just, you know, just, Subhanallah. Just, so this is, do you see where I have to, when I say I want to be modern, some people say, oh, why are you saying these things? You know, we should be traditional. Of course we're traditional. But modern, very simply, you know what modern means. Modern means your time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we have to be of the time we live in and use the sciences of, and this is why this is modern science. So anyway, so Alhamdulillah, you know, this is not just one. There's another very beautiful uh, one. I, I read that yesterday in my manzil where it says, Allah mm -hmm. says, Wa inna la Allah is talking about khalaqna samawati wal ard. We created the heavens and the earth. And then we are expanding it. Inna la musi'oon. This is really, I'm not stretching the meanings. <laughs> musi'oon is actually from wasa'a, which obviously uh, some of the tr translators, uh, you know, the commentators said, wow, you know, this is Allah giving lots of bounties. So Allah is always blessing the earth with his bounties. But really, if you go here, tr 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 literally, which is, and we are expanding the universe. <laughs> and what is that? Well, that's another great scientific finding which wow. uh, happened about you know, 70, 80 years ago, you know, the expanding universe. Now that wow. is almost, almost an established fact now that the universe is constantly expanding. Wow, <laughs> subhanAllah. subhanAllah. You know, this subhanAllah. is where I said to you, this is, you know, these are the ramuz and the secrets of the Quran, which you know, are scattered throughout and I'm very fortunate that I can understand some of these scientific facts. Wow. And when you Mashallah. see that, you just say, That's amazing. Oh, you know, this is, this is, this is, this, you know, this is because a prophet in the seventh century Arabia certainly would not know these facts. Okay? Of course. This is yeah. not given knowledge. And they would not say, this is why, you know, in, in the, uh, we, we, we always have this and we still have this uh, very clear uh, principle that you do not, understand the whole of the Quran. You can't understand the Quran. It's, it's, it's not possible. <laughs> Do you see why? Just mm -hmm. like those people, you know, those Mufassirin, 60 years ago, couldn't understand what is Anzalna here. There are things which we still don't know and our, uh, inshallah, future generations will have, when they have greater insight into the biology, uh, into pharmacology, into physiology, Feel how our more. bodies work, mm -hmm. and neurosciences, and into cosmology, then they will say, wow, this is it. Wow, subhanAllah, subhanAllah. Yeah, we have not, like in the 1,400 years that we've had this awesome book, mashallah, we still haven't uh, retracted all of the knowledge from it and it just keeps giving and giving and uh, like that knowledge yeah, about the stardust. Sorry, go ahead, yeah. go ahead. It's not just, Rehan, it's not just science, yeah, no? uh. even in humanities, even in law. You know, for example, um, you know, the Quran has a particular take on divorce. Mm -hmm. right and on man and woman relationship okay you know if you look at the modern only last year the british law was changed for divorce for example we always had this idea of you know divorce is the man and the woman's right to separate when things get tough and difficult okay they have this right uh, and there's nothing stopping it uh, and uh, sometimes that doesn't have to be a fault they can just separate Okay, and, and have a divorce, right? Mm -hmm. Now you've got the British law. Last year, you know, it came, it was, it was been, they've worked on it for years and years, spending millions of pounds on research. And the conclusion was, yes, let's have no fault divorce. 
I said, Subhanallah, Subhanallah. you're just catching up. <laughs> you know, just, just catching up with, 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 with the beautiful teachings of the Quran and the Sunnah. It is just, and you know, um, you know, we're having very serious problems with man-woman relationship in this society. Uh, disrespect for women, abuse of women uh, is, is uh, so rampant uh, and, and uh, it really is an evil, vicious thing that's happening on a big scale. And the Quran has an amazing solution to that. It presents that solution. First of all, you know, it teaches us how we need to really respect w- women. First, our equal. Then it says, you know, your paradise actually lies at the feet of your mother. <laughs> you can't go to paradise without, you know, kissing the feet of your mother, without showing that respect. You won't go. And who is a woman? She's a woman. <laughs> so this is the respect it's given you know, to women. Uh, you know, modern laws cannot match that. Uh, and even, you know, they don't pay equally. Mm. Um, women only got the right to education and to ownership very recently, you know, in Europe, 100 years ago or so. So Alhamdulillah, you know, in every field, not just in, you know, physics, chemistry, biology, um, and neurosciences and medicine, but in humanities, and in rhetoric, in your field. (laughs) Seriously, some of the Quranic rhetoric is just mind boggling. Uh, You know, Iltafat is one of the great uh, rhetorical device of the Quran. Mm. Where, what it does is this, um, 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 uh, Rehan, it's talking in the third person, all right? So he did that, she did that, they did this. And then it just immediately, suddenly, sorry, it suddenly it switches to the first person, okay? Or to the second person. Now, this is called iltifat. In English, it's not very common. It's very rare in English. We do it, we might use, when we're speaking, we might rotate our uh, tenses and our, you know, the, the persons, first, second, mm-hmm. third person, we might do that. But it, it's not a common thing. But in Quran, it's an amazing. And it's, it's something which has a, because it's conversational, it makes a lot of sense. I, I, I initially, when I started the translation, I thought, Yar, you know, in English, the English men won't understand it. The English women won't understand this. Why is the Quran talking in third person and suddenly goes to first person? It's just badding. It's a bad writing. <laughs> I thought I, I, I'll, 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 I'll do away with iltifat, you know, this rotation of mm-hmm. tenses and rotation of, of, of uh, pronouns. I'll do without it. And I'll, I'll try to be English. Uh, and uh, then I did a bit. And then I thought, no, it's wrong. It doesn't sound right. We've got to do it as you know, the Quran is, you know, mm-hmm. the or, or it's talking. So the path is an amazing, you know. Uh, again, in every field, there is something new we, we can discover. Inshallah. Mashallah, what an amazing book! I love the way you talk about it. Um, like I, I'm completely being educated on this. Uh, a lot of these miracles, like things that have been discovered, uh, like I've just heard of a lot of them. Some of the ones you mentioned were you, so I'm really grateful for that knowledge. But um, I've got a couple of uh, round-off questions for you. So one of them is, what is your favorite surah of the Quran? Okay. Lots of them are very favorite. Mm -hmm. Surah Yasin, because, you know, it has seven powerful uh, proofs for Allah bringing the dead to life. And they are logical, scientific proofs. (laughs) I love them. And then Surah Yusuf is another very, you know, beautiful uh, surah. I've just done a commentary on that. Uh, but Surah Yusuf is uh, amazing, you know, 27 episodes. It's the drama of an amazing uh, proportion, and it's uh, really an epic, to be honest. And, uh, you know, uh, what we need to do, Rehan, is, you know, we need to have good English, English writers and English uh, Muslims who can really write beautiful English and, and, and bring out this dramatic um, surah into life. I, I say my my, uh, uh, my commentary on it brings out you know the amazing nuances of this story um, and and uh, the episodes. I say twenty seven episodes. You know, of, of, and very fast moving as well. Uh, and when you read it in the, the way I presented it, 
you just see how quickly you know this the light it's also obviously a metaphor about the fleeting nature of life how quick the life is ephemeral okay yes those two surahs are very um, as i say a lot of them are surah anur surah anur is very because it's about how we tackle the um, promiscuity the lewdness uh, and sexual madness that is common in our society to be honest it's a great it's a great um, a medicine uh, it's a, a great solution to sexual problems of modern man so surah an-nur is an amazing one as well subhanallah uh, another question for you is what is your favorite book outside of the quran sorry your favorite book outside of the quran <laughs> which is my favorite book outside the Quran. Well, that's a very uh, I, I love uh, Rumi. So I, I read actually a lot of Rumi's uh, Masnavi regularly. And then Iqbal, uh, Alama Dr. Muhammad Iqbal was an amazing uh, giant, intellectual giant, but somebody who had huge love of the Quran and a deep understanding and a modern understanding of the Quran as well. He gives me a lot of inspirations as well. Uh, my own teacher, Pir Muhammad Karim Shah Rahmatullah, I read his books as his tafsir. It, uh, you know, I, I know it inside out. I, I've been teaching it for decades. Uh, yes. Uh, and, and in English, you know, I, I, I do read, I, uh, let me be, I'm not showing off now, Rehan, but I do read English books. I buy them uh, regularly and I do read, but I try to, um, not novels. I, I do, you know, just, I, I tell you, I read Ishi Guru's. Um, uh, the buried giant you know when ishu guru got the nobel prize in 2018 uh, okay. for his mm-hmm. uh, english literature mm-hmm. uh, and i was just amazed why has he got um, i'll give you the reasons you'll have to do a special interview on ishi guru and, uh, okay. and 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 uh, quran yeah no? i'll do we'll do that on it so i, I bought Inshallah. his novel so i'm not a, a great I, I don't read novels a lot mm-hmm. i read reviews of books uh, and i i i read um, technical books, particularly to do with language nowadays. Mm-hmm. And any book on Quran, you know, that comes out. MashaAllah, that's amazing. Uh, another one for you is what's a piece of advice you've been given that you never forgot? <laughs> oh, I, 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 well, I, I hope there's lots of them that are constantly keeping mm-hmm. me uh, smart. Uh, and I'm not again bragging, you know. When I, I may Allah forgive, you know, I, I'm a very humble person. But I, I'm just saying this for you know our young people that we need to remain smart. Uh, I mean, physically, mentally, morally, uh, and and spiritually. That's what I mean when I talk about being smart. You know that uh, you really have to have a a purpose and aim, uh, mm-hmm. and and we need to pursue it with earnest uh, and and with genuineness. And I, I think, you know, one advice I, I hope, which is almost ingrained and I always subconsciously do is, how can I be good to others? What can I give? And I think that was one really what has driven me to do this amazing work of the Quran, to be honest. What can I give people? And, you know, to give Quran uh, in, in their language, uh, language they understand and the way they understand it. I think that's, I hope it's, it's a gift that I can uh, give to my English speaking readers. MashaAllah. And the real last question is if anyone wants to buy your beautiful Quran or uh, find you on social media, uh, what platforms are you on and where can people find you? You know, the best one is majesticquran.co.uk. You mm-hmm. can contact me through that, visit that. I also, Grimia Institute is another one, grimia.com. Uh, 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 and my uh, the invitation magazine is another one where I one of my writings are put on as well. Uh, so those three platforms would be good. And if you really want to keep in touch with me, I send out a blog every Friday morning called Friday Reflections. And I hope you can subscribe to that. And you'll you know um, I I, sh- I share my reflections on topical themes. Amazing. Um, I'll put all of your links down below for anyone who wants to check it out. And really, I can't uh, recommend enough that everyone gets a copy of this beautiful Quran. And it's such an excellent book. But uh, from the bottom of my heart, thank you so much for coming on and sharing your story with us today. And uh, I wish you nothing but success and for your future. And I hope more people read this book, inshallah. Rehan, Jazakallah. Allah bless you as well.